Esther chapter 4. And we're looking at Esther as a historical event that happened, according to the date in my Bible, around B.C. 510. We're also looking at prophecy of a future event called the Tribulation Period. Haman being a type of Antichrist, chapter 3, he's released his wrath against one group of people because they won't worship him. And when that abomination of desolation spoken about Jesus and Daniel revealed that there he is sitting on the most holy place, receive my mark and worship my image that I bring to life. And if you don't, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, if you don't, Daniel, you're going to face consequences of death. They will not be relieved in the fire. They will not be relieved of the of the lions as we read in Daniel. They will die violent deaths. Revelation says, I see the head I see the, them that have been beheaded under the soul of the throne. The uh, guillotine's coming back according to the Bible. It's not a sword. So chapter four, verse four, when Malachi Perceived, that means he's understood, he's observed all that was done. This decree has been signed on this certain day, kill the Jews. Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city, in the middle of the city, and cried with a loud and bitter cry. This is a, this is a biblical protest. Sackcloth, dust on your head, your clothes are torn, and it pictures ripping the flesh. It pictures God, you made us, and according to what Moses wrote, we're just dust. And when you come into the tribulation period and Satan, the Antichrist, has revealed his authority to kill the Jews, there is going to be great lamentations of the Jewish people. I mean, would not be, you take of yourself of what one of the races you are. Me, I'm multiple races, but Polish. That seems to be the one I really take account of. My, my great grandparents came over from Poland to this country. I know their story. And so what if all of a sudden throughout the entire world, a, a leader came up and said, all Polish people will die once we get you. Well, there are going to be great lamentations of Polish people all over the world. But it's not Poland that the Antichrist is going to be angry with. It's not going to be America. It's not going to be the English. It's going to be one group of people he's been angry with since Abram, the nation of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the 12 tribes. And remember, there's 144,000 male virgins out there of the 12 tribes minus Dan and minus Ephraim. Remember, Moses and Elijah will be showing up. The Antichrist is going to be extremely angry that the waters turn to blood, that there is no water. As Ahab was angry with Elijah. As Pharaoh was angry with Moses. Revelation chapter 12 of all the chapters in the Bible of that fierce anger of the dragon. And remember, there's no God in Esther, but we can see God working in the background. So lamentations, tears. I mean, you ever watch a video when those oriental people are upset when the when the middle eastern people you know there's been a bombing and, and people have been killed you ever just hear them wail in the streets it's agony to hear it here it comes again and you know one of the ways they're going to realize you're a jew you're the one going to be fear you're the one going to be in agony you're going to give away yourself by your lamentation by your actions unless you hold yourself back and this is the point where they'll have no food they'll have no water they'll be put in jail no one's going to take care of them medically no one is going to seek them and yet there's a few people 
that Jesus will count them as a sheep nation that's going to help them during this time. All the rest of the world will be the goats going against them. And Cain, even before the king's gate, now in this realm, there's a gate in the city specifically designed for the king. We've already seen that. For none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. So what Mordecai is doing is he's breaking the law. And when we read in Nehemiah, he, he's serving the, the wine and he's sad. And the law says you can't be sad in the king's presence. And the law here is you cannot be in wailing. You cannot be dressed in lamentation before the king, even outside where the king's gate is. Again, that's going to mark the June, the tribulation period. They're going to have to reframe. That's hard. So he's breaking the law. And in every province, territory, whither so the king's commandment and his decree came, remember chapter 3, it's been sent out by the post, there was great mourning among the Jews. I remember the, uh, I was it, came across it the other night, first time that Jew, the word Jew. Last night. Chapter 2. Well, chapter 2 is when the first time the word Jew shows up. The Jews and fasting and weeping and wailing and many laid in sackcloth and ashes. You are uh, you are identifying yourself until you come to realize we can't do this. We got to go hiding. In order to save their lives, they're, they're going to they're gonna have to change themselves. Or just go run. The Bible says, Revelation 12, God has prepared a place for them. <clears throat> so Esther's maids and her chamberlains came and told her. her. Then was the queen exceedingly grieved. Look, notice the queen. She's queen as this is going on. Grieved. Why is she grieved? Her uncle is upset. Her uncle's breaking the law. And any moment her uncle, who's her father, adopted, that she loves and obeys, can be put to a penalty of her husband, the king. And she sent raiment, real raiment, real clothes, to clothe Mordecai to, to take away his sackcloth. Because he's breaking the law. To take away the sackcloth from him, but he refused it not. Esther has no idea what's going on. My uncle, my father, you know, Doctor Fox, he's out there. He's upset about something that is a custom of my people, which he hasn't shown herself yet. Remember. And the thing is, uncle, father, you can't do that. She loves her father, un uh, her, her uncle, her father. Because remember, he adopted her, that. If you get in trouble, I can't help you, even if I'm the queen. No one's going to be able to help the Jew, except the, the sheep nation. And even they're going to be under consequences of death and confinement and, in other words, uh, what they confiscation. So. Then called Esther for Hatach, one of the king's chambermen. Now she's going to her, to her husband's men. She what? She had her own her own people do it. Now she's turning to her husband's men, whom he had appointed to attend. That's the first time that word shows up. Attend upon her, and gave him commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was so. Mordecai. What is the problem? Just change your clothes, will you? Go somewhere else and be in sackcloth. Not there. So Hatash went forth to Mordecai into the street of the city. It's a public thing. 
And Mordecai is not fighting the government. He's not picking up a gun. He's not picking up a sword. He's just in the middle of the street, sackcloth with, with ashes, moaning and berailing. And so is everybody else in the realm that Esther doesn't know. There are probably other Jews there too with him by now. Which is before the king's gate. And Mordecai told him, this is the man, of all that had happened unto him, and of the sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay, chapter 3, 11, 3, 9, and 13, of the king's treasures for the Jews to destroy them. All right, here's the problem. That man Haman, he has taken account of the king's treasures to kill us. Jew. Esther has not shown her relation yet of her kindred. People know Mordecai is a Jew. All the Hebrews are, are ordered to be killed. And verse 8, and he gave him the copy of the writing of the decree. All right. Notice how many times the word copy shows up in Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. Mordecai is like, don't take my word for it. Here's this piece of paper. Bring it to her. This is to prove, not only by the words of my mouth, this came from your husband. See his signet? Which really came out of uh, Haman. They gave him the copy of the writing of the decree that was given to Shushan to destroy them, to show it unto Esther, and to declare it unto her, and to change... Uh, excuse me, charge her that she should go in unto the king to make supplication unto him and to make requests before him for her people. God is working behind the scenes, though he's not in the book. Esther, God has put you in that place right now to protect us. Don't see God. No G-O-D, no Jehovah, no capital L, capital O, capital R, capital o. But God has put forth that Jewish queen, got rid of the Gentile queen. Now, this is why you're here, Esther. You're there to protect us. we got more reading. And Hatash came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. And Esther spoke to Hatash and gave him commandment unto Mordecai. Notice Esther and Mordecai are not together. Their conversation is with other people between the two. And Esther respect unto Hatas and gave him commandment unto Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, so there's only two in the Bible, man and woman, male or female, shall come unto the king into the inner court, who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death. If you come before the king and you have not been invited you have not been asked, you have not been, bring me such and such. It was the death penalty. You just didn't walk up to the king. Except, okay, here's the exception to the rule. Such to whom the king shall hold out his golden scepter. You walk in that room, that king doesn't say, okay, here's my scepter. If he keeps that scepter by himself, you're dead. If he moves his hand and grabs it, thank you. This is his wife. Remember that. That's his wife. This is the queen. And she does not have the authority just to walk in there and say, hi, hon. And he may live. But I have not been called to come in unto the king these 30 days. That's a little bit of period of separation there. 
King hasn't called me or anything. And she's telling Mordecai, if I go, I'm dead. She's trying to find an excuse. Like Moses, Lord, can't you find somebody else? Jonah, I got in that slow boat to the other side of the world. Hey, everybody makes an excuse. That's what she's doing. Mordecai, I'm putting my neck on the line. And they told to Mordecai Esther's words. And Mordecai commanded to, to answer Esther. Okay, this is what you tell her. Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. If you shut up and don't do nothing, they're going to find out who you are and they're going to kill you. Remember, they don't know who she is. You can't just say, love it or leave it. Just let it be. It'll all work out good. Kumbaya. Mordecai told her, you're going to die then. The wrath of Naaman is, king, yes. Guess what I just found out? What? The people I hate, yeah. One of them is your wife. I got to kill her. Kind of harsh. Verse 14. For if thou, Esther, altogether holdest, that's the first time that word shows up, thy peace at this time. You don't say a word. You don't do nothing. You just keep queening. We're dead. You're dead. If Jesus Christ never came and made the atonement, did not suffer and die for us we'd be dead and going to hell esther is the intermarry between the nation and the jewish people as jesus christ is the intermission between me and god it all rests upon one person now here in the only place in the bible where there's a woman that is helping and saving a group of people nowhere else for salvation does it happen there's one meter between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Right now, here's a woman. And it's kind of funny because in Revelation 12, it says there was a woman that gave birth to a man child. And that woman who was the, the stars, God gave her a place. Esther's that type of woman. I'm not going to say she is that woman, but Esther's the type of Israel. In trouble and problems. So it says, if you hold your peace. Then shall their enlargement, that's the only time that word shows up, and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. Somebody else God was going to use and it won't be you if you shut up. We're not going to grow as a nation enlargement. We're not going to be delivered unless God does something and God has called you into that position. But you have a free will, Esther. You don't want to do it? then you're going to die. There's free will. There's a picture of free will in the Bible. Mordecai says you can do it. If you shut up, don't do nothing, fine. You'll be dead and God will get somebody else. No one's ever stepped in the gap for man except Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our deliverance. Jesus Christ is our enlargement. Is it not that the church has grown since the book of Acts? By us taking the gospel to a lost and dying world and people have received that message by the free will. Rise to the Jews from another place. Someone else will do it if you don't do it. And if you don't tell God, if you don't do what God wants you to do, he'll find somebody else, but it won't be as better. Be better the first one that God has for the first event to happen if that person will say yes. We're going through a thing right now and, and, and with medical in, the, in this family. You know, if the person just do their job like they're supposed to instead of panty wasting around, things would be so much better. And we, we've done something Friday that we have to make another phone call. Maybe somebody else will have to come in and do it. It would have been, you know, all the aggravation would not have happened if the first person would have done their job. And the first person may get in trouble. 
When God, listen, even I have failed. God has told me many times, give that person the gospel track. Talk to them about Jesus. I have said no, free will. I do it. Or I come up, I don't have a track. I think God's saying, no, you're supposed to be having your, your armor on. You, you're missing something. Every day we have a free will of, for God. Whether we're going to do or not do. Sometimes not do is just as better as doing. There are things that God doesn't want us to do. Free will. Watch what he says. But thou, thou, Esther, if you say no, and thy father's house, me, they know I'm a Jew. I'm the one that started this. Now, don't you think somebody would sell out to Naaman for money to say, Naaman, come here, yeah. You know that Mordecai you hate? Well, yeah. You know Esther? Yeah. That's his, that's, she's his uncle. And he's taken her to be her, her daughter, you know, by adoption. Oh, thank you very much. And that's what people are going to do to the Antichrist. That's what they did when, when, when Babylon came and took over Judah and Jerusalem, the, the, the Edomites, the children of Esau. Hey, Nebi, you there. You see these Jews I caught? They're trying to cross the Jordan. How much will you give them for me? I'll take it. Is that not what they did to Jesus, his own people? Hey, how much will you uh, give me for this man? If, you, if I give him to you, you can make him shut up. As if I'm just reading through the minor prophets today. God's angry with the people because you sold the girls, the Jewish girls, so you can have wine. You sold the boys so you can have shoes. That's the story of Israel. And in the tribulation period, just like right now, they're going to be selling those Jews to the enemy so they can get some money. You have not very seen around wanted posters. They were great in the Wild West. They're coming back. And those one thing posters, we want the Hebrews, we want the Jews, we want Israel. We want them dead. Forget about a lie. Unless the Antichrist wants to have that pleasure of killing him personally, then he's going to be dead or alive. That's why they're all wailing. This is what the whole situation is going on. The commandment is kill the Jews, no one else. Listen. Look at chapter 1, verse 1 again, of Esther. Chapter 1, verse 1. Now it came to pass in the days of Araherses, this is Araherses which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia a hundred, over 107 and 20 provinces. 127 provinces in there against one group of people only. Not Indians. The Jewish people. So thy father's house shall be destroyed. That's you and me, Mordecai is saying. Who knows whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? There's no God in the book. Esther, God may have put you for this example right now. But you gotta speak, you gotta do something. And you being an authority that God has put you. Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Okay, she sent word again. Then Esther bade them again, Mordecai this answer. Okay, here's her response. Go. That's the actual between Bible word. Go. Gather together all the Jews. Uh, oh, yeah, it's great that there's one date set up. It hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Because there's a period of time, one date that's coming. It must not happen yet. He's like, gather all the Jews. <laughs> oh yeah, put them all in one big lump. Is that not what the Nazi party did? Gather all the Jews together? But she says, gather all the Jews together. <laughs> Go gather all the Jews that are present in Shishan and fast. <laughs> so what's a fast? Fast ye for me. Neither eat nor drink three days. Well, it's some kind of... What do you think you are, Esther? Going to fast for you? Yeah. 
night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. Are they Jewish? Think about that for a moment. Did she call Jewish women to be her maidens that nobody knows who they are? Or is she just so like and so beloved of her people? Come here, ma come here, maidens. Yeah, we're going to fast. No food, no water. Why? Fast for me. We're, have, we're having a prayer time. Okay. Okay, yeah, sure. Look at the obedience in this book. There's only one person not obeying. That's Naaman. So fast, we will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king. Not been invited. Which is which is not according to the law. I can't just walk in there. I already told you, Mordecai. So she's already come into her heart. If I perish, I perish. Do or die. She's obeying her uncle. Her, her father. If this power God has given me, okay, it'll work out. If not, I'm going to die. Love you, Mordecai. Look at the particular, and look what she, her first reaction is, okay, let's have a fast, no food, and no water. Let's do it for three days. That's an interesting days in the Bible, three days and three nights. That pictures Jesus Christ suffering and dying. And then resurrected. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had come in. Now look at her. Look at him. Now he's obeying his the younger person. And I guarantee he's got the Jews together. Like she said, okay, guys, it all rests upon Esther right now, as far as I know. I don't know. <laughs> no food, no water for three days, three nights. And that's how, the, that's how that chapter closes. It closes in prayer and fasting. And don't you think as the Jews, if it's still a feature, but there is a city somewhere God is prepared for those Jews and wouldn't believe they're going to be, they're out there fasting, they're out there praying, they have no food because there is no food. They have no water because there is no water unless God feeds them again miraculously. The book of Numbers. That man is going to fall again. And there's going to be times that they're going to say, hey, no, no manna today. Not just because it's a Sabbath, because we're in desire straits here. I'm telling you, the Old Testament is going to happen all over again. Because the Jews will not learn from history. They will not obey God. And all, we Christians to do the same thing because we don't obey God all the time either. How many times that has God whipped my butt, put things back in my life because I didn't do it right the first time? Just go around and think. And you, you must, you must read your Bible, Genesis to Revelation, and you must read Pilgrim's Progress. How many paths did Pilgrim take that he should not have taken, and he just ended up where? Back where he's supposed to be after what? He was being beaten. He went to a battle. He, he lost his his his, his role. He, he, and guess what? That's me too. And God does not want it to be so. We sin against God when we tell God no in our free will. Sometimes I wish there wasn't a free. I wish God would just stay, uh, do it. <laughs> But then again, we want to get a blessing, wouldn't we, if we were forced to do it? And we ruined someone else's life by not obeying God. I, I, I've learned that just recently. But I'm probably not going to learn that lesson. 